What would it look like to build the cheapest supercar possible? No luxuries, no safety nets, no holds barred. A 200 mile per hour death trap cobbled together out of hand welded frames, salvage parts, and balls of steel. This is the question that founded Low Cost, a cult automotive philosophy with followers around the globe pursuing one single imperative, the highest speeds for the lowest cost. Low Cost itself is not a brand. They have no badge and you can't go to a dealership and order one. The designation is a play on words, combining the phrase low cost with the name Lotus. That's because the movement was largely inspired by the Lotus 7, one of the most popular kit cars of all time. It was a lightweight and affordable race car envisioned by Colin Chapman in the 1950s, a DIY build following a long lineage of trials victories. It embodies the idea of a car so basic that it can outrun more expensive and well-equipped exotics out of sheer lightness. That mindset prioritizing simplicity above all else lives on today in the low-cost movement. If Colin Chapman was the genius behind the Lotus 7, then Ron Champion was the mastermind of low-cost. He created the literal blueprints for the cheap supercar philosophy, which he published in his book, Build Your Own Sports Car for as Little as 250 Pounds, in 1997. Although the title was naively optimistic, perhaps a prehistoric version of clickbait, the tempting proposition made it a bestseller nonetheless. Hundreds of enthusiast builders were inspired by the 160 pages of diagrams, measurements, and detailed instructions. Here were the sacred texts that would teach you how to take a pile of scrap metal and use it to overtake the fastest track cars in the world. The success of the book ultimately led to a second edition, as well as countless internet forums, low-cost owners clubs, and club racing championships. At first, most builds were powered by the drivetrain from a Mark II Ford Escort. Champion's book recommended that as the affordable donor car to serve as a sacrificial lamb, contributing its engine, transmission, and anything else you could salvage. At the time, the Escort was easy to find in scrapyards around the country and could be picked up for less change than a share of Lordstown Motors. But the shocking popularity of the book resulted in high demand for junkyard escorts, ultimately causing a shortage and increased prices. Not to mention that over 25 years have passed since the book was published, and the escort is no longer the pinnacle of cheap performance. So over the generations, builders have gotten creative with the parts they use, scrapping builds together with everything from the Honda K series to Audi's 4.2 V8. Motorcycle engines are also quite common, since they offer high revving adrenaline in a small package. But Mazda engines seem to be the most popular, usually the B6ZE out of an NA Miata, or the 13B Rotary from an RX-7. Both options are lightweight, affordable, and have loads of aftermarket support. Maybe you won't be able to find a junked RX-7 for under 250 pounds, but a salvage auction might yield some options under 1K. In addition to the drivetrain stolen from a junkyard donor, you'll also need a custom chassis. This is usually a 1-inch tubular steel space frame, carefully cut and measured to the exact specifications laid out in the book. The design is simple yet rigid, inspired by World War II bomber planes. There are also several variations of the design that have spawned throughout the decades, such as the Haynes Roadster with independent rear suspension, or the McSorley 442 that offers extra space for a larger engine. But for many builders, assembling a custom chassis demands one key skill that excludes them. Welding. It's unsurprising that many amateur car builders did not want to trust their life to their own novice welding handiwork. And that is where MK Sports Cars came in. The demand for low-cost parts and pre-welded chassis has propped up an entire industry of manufacturers who will aid ambitious builders along the way. Suppliers like MK Sports Cars, Westfield, and Tiger Racing offer bits and pieces for a much lower cost than something pre-built like Caterham, including entire kits from about 10,000 pounds or the frame alone for as little as 2,300. 
purchasing a pre-assembled frame, suspension rig, or rolling chassis is a bit of a shortcut. But for less experienced enthusiasts, the extra cost may be worth the convenience. The low-cost body panels offer a lot more freedom though. Although most builds are styled after the original Lotus, each one is slightly different from the next, often achieving more of a 7-esque look than an exact replica. Unlike the frame which needs to provide safety and rigidity, the exterior offers plenty of opportunities to cut corners and save money. Fiberglass, sheet metal, the leftover cardboard from your last Amazon order. If you can imagine it, it's probably been done already. In fact, a popular choice for headlight housings used to be IKEA salad bowls. MK Sports Cars, Westfield, and your local dumpster all offer affordable pre-made bodywork. The type of performance you can expect to achieve well, that depends on your creativity and budget. Low-end Miata builds might have the same power-to-weight ratio as a 718 Cayman, if you cut the calories and keep the car under 1,300 pounds. But when it comes to the rare V8 Frankenstein projects, well, the only limit is how tight you can grip the steering wheel. A low-cost racing championship organized by 750 Motor Club features entrance powered by the Ford Crossflow engine similar to what was put in the original Lotus 7. These four-cylinder motors generally produce a meager 50 to 150 horsepower. A more advanced series races cars with the 1.8-liter MX-5 engine instead. It may not be the high adrenaline top speeds of Le Mans, but considering most of these cars were built for less than $10,000, it's impressive what they can accomplish. Moving from the track to the street can be difficult depending on local rules and regulations. In my home state of Florida, you can register pretty much anything with four wheels and a turn signal. But drive anywhere other than the land of the free and you might hit some legislative roadblocks. Special chassis modifications exist to reinforce the frame and comply with Australian structural requirements, as well as plenty of clever loopholes to obtain a license plate for your custom build in most countries. Like every other aspect of low cost, if there's a will, there's a way. I suppose I'm supposed to offer some sort of warning as a conclusion to this video, to remind you that risking life and limb in an improvised garage build will only result in tragedy. But that's almost the point of low cost. These cars aren't supposed to be safe or color within the lines. It's a raw experience, drifting on the edge of a knife and experience the product of your own sweat and blood in the most analog way possible. Low cost is a perfectly flawed build, excelling at lightweight performance, cost-cutting ingenuity, and the pursuit of speed. Thanks for watching.